Greetings. I'm Reverend Dr. Asada Haki, and I'm here to present the first part of a three-part mini lecture on miseducation of a soul. This mini lecture is based on a conversation that my father and I um, find ourselves constantly having when he calls me. My father is currently incarcerated uh, in the, a correctional facility in Jackson, Michigan. However, we talk often and it's always about higher consciousness, which he basically helped give me, put, set me on the path to spiritual rebirth years and years ago. So lately we had, a, we've been talking about, you know, the elevation and conscious uh, raising within souls. And one of the things that we both agreed that there has been a miseducation of the soul. And so what we did, uh, we created, well, he shared his, his, um, how can I say this? His knowledge and wisdom based on how he came to raise his consciousness with different um, spiritual truths. And I know that my foundation being the church at one point in time, it was the Bible that I was able to go to, but I didn't quite understand it. But stepping into a metaphysical teaching, um, teachings and content and books, I was able to better understand the Bible. And so um, Bible scriptures that were more pointing out the divinity in me as me. And so what I wanted to do in these three parts was to share what my daddy shared as his knowledge and wisdom of truth, of spiritual truth. And I wanted to share the Bible's scriptures that helped me better understand it. Because one of my spiritual, ascended spiritual, uh, ascended master spiritual guides is Jesus. And Jesus is the one that kind of like I was able to hear through my spirit as to under, better understand when it's spoken in the Bible that what I am, you are, what I do, you will do, and even greater. So with that being said, I'm going to begin and start sharing our conversation. I have broken down his to relate to different Bible scriptures. And so I pray that this actually helps you all. Okay. However, if it does not resonate, I thank you for stopping by and many blessings to you and your soul. So here we go. I don't know why my computer continues to freeze every time I get ready to do this. And when I'm not recording, then it'd be like moving forward. All right, here we go. Miseducation of a soul, our purpose. To share what aided me to raise my soul consciousness to be a soul aid and inspiration for anyone who was led to this and is on their master thyself soul journey, to share my father, my father Baba Mzay's number one soul lesson taught to me, which is it is only God or ultimate reality consciousness, meaning we are just consciousness. And also question everything, like the Bible teaches, especially if you come from a family, you was raised and reared in a family that their, your foundation uh, was the church or the Bible, how to better understand them. So to question what that means in your prayers and in your meditations. Um, and so, like I said earlier, these are scriptures that reconnected many dots within me co uh, as I cross reference from the metaphysical teachings that I studied. So, I asked my father, how do we begin to share this information? And so he proposed the question to me and I proposed the question back to him, what is the cause of the miseducation? And so my father stated, most people because of their human way of relating to what they term God, tend to think of this higher power as something separate and apart from themselves. This kind of thinking is due to a miseducation of the soul. And what that means is how we're, the miseducation aspect of it is the teachings. It doesn't matter whether it's the religion of Christianity or another religion. It is still taught that God is outside of you, 
when the truth of it is you are that spirit. You are, God is within you and that's where you turn to and that you're not separate from that divine power or divine spirit as we would call God. So understanding the Bible for me, I came to understand God is the word. In the Bible, it presents in Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And in John 1 and 1, it states in the New Testimony, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So my understanding became that if everything that was made was by God and with the word all was made, then God is the word, okay? So for me, that was the beginning of me like, okay, okay, so God lives in me. So how do I connect with this God within me? How do I better understand the presence of God in me? So continuing on, so my dad responds, soul for me is an individual unit of ultimate reality. We are one in and with this ultimate reality. Another term I use to describe ultimate reality is divine spirit, a thought form created in and from divine spirit. We appear to be separate from the source of our origin, but we have the attributes of our creator, Baba M. Zay. So for me to better understand it, because at first it was like foreign language when he was teaching me this over 30 years ago, like I truly didn't understand that. But like I said, I was always led once I questioned, like, what does that mean? I don't understand that. And so these are the scriptures that helped me better understand what ultimate reality was and how I am that ultimate reality. Genesis 1 and 26, let us make man in our image and likeness. In Genesis 2 and 7, and the Lord God formed man of dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. The New Testament in John 1 and 14, the word was made flesh. So therefore, humanity is this flesh that is God. Your body is the temple or the flesh, and the breath of life is God presence within us all as us all period. So I know there are people who will be like, well, no, that ain't true. You're not supposed to take the Bible and interpret your way. No, you have to. You have to find out how these sacred teachings apply to your soul today. What does this mean for you today? Because if you continue to look outside yourself, then that's why you keep looking and keep searching because you search it for something that does not exist outside of you. Everything exists from within you. Your flesh is the temple. It is a vehicle for the presence of God or divine substance, source energy, the supreme being, however you want to term God in you, that's where it's at, in you. Miseducation of a soul, pronouns and genders of duality. Now, the one thing that it, it, I didn't really care about it for a long time, but recently it has been like like a nudge in my soul, like the, the pronouns and agendas. I don't know if it's because everybody is on this pronoun thing where I don't identify with this, I don't identify as that, but I identify as so and so and so and so. If that's what got it, or is it because you know a lot of people are going through things, but they said, "Well, God, I gotta wait on God," and it's just like you are that God. You're you're who you're waiting on. You're who you looking to, but you looking outside of yourself, and it's always like He do it. He going to do it. God got me. He, he is with me. Spirit has no gender. Okay. Gender is not God's spirit is not a pronoun, but within the Bible, it will throw you off. Right. And so, uh, meaning like before and before Genesis, um, in Genesis one and 27, it was written that God said, not he, him, or his, right? Uh, God created man in his own image and in the image of God 
created he, him, male and female, created he, them. Okay, so pronouns and gender came after the beginning, which was God. God was, it, it, you would think that in the beginning, he, God made, that should set it off. And then even if you go into uh, the New Testament and in John 1 and 1 is God was the word and God was, and, and then in John 14, word was made flesh there still was not a gender. It was, it was not a gender. But when you get caught up in the pronouns and the genders of duality, which causes duality to me, because that's part of the miseducation is the duality that you and God are separate and the duality of the pronouns that make you feel like God is a he, which makes you feel like he is above. No, no one's above anyone. No one's below anyone. You're only above or below within your own beingness. Anyway, I question, my question was, why is this? If God made male and female as its image, you see, I said its image, then how did God become just he and him, right? If the image is just the word, how was there? How did it become he and him? Remember, the Bible was written over 25 times. There's over 25 versions of what God said and how God wanted things to be. But you have to listen to your intuition. That's why I say you have to question these things. I know that they say, don't question God. That was a lie to keep you from finding the truth that you are that, that spirit. Okay, you are one with it. We all come from the same void. We all come from the same image and likeness, okay? So anyway, spiritual truth is for me, uh, also if Eve woman came after Adam, then who represents the female aspect of God? So as I said, male, he, him, male and female created he, them in Genesis one and 27. But who is the female if Eve came after Adam? Genesis 127 is the aspects of God or spirit as the divine feminine and divine masculine of each living soul I call God essence. So what that means is that it's not a pronoun and it's not a gender in which this scripture speaks of. It is actually speaking of the aspects of this divine essence that we call God. I came to understand the divine feminine and masculine within myself when I was a single parent. And I was, I knew I'm, I'm a woman, so I know I'm a mother, I gave birth, but then it was the absence of the father, but yet I still carried out the same duties or roles that they say men and fathers are supposed to do, which is the one that brings home the bread, the one that lays down the discipline, the one that keeps the house, you know, the head of the household. I was all of that. But then later I came to realize that those were the he, the him, the, uh, the, the male, the female, the he, the them that they're talking about in Genesis 1 and 27. We all have that. You have men who are single fathers um, without the mother's um, presence. And so, yes, they work. They maintain the household. They're the head of the household. They make sure that they do the discipline, but they also provide the nourishment, right? The nurturing, excuse me. And, and they give the love, you know, and the care and the compassion and the understanding and, and being there and, and, and molding their children. They don't just say, well, I can't do it because the mother is not here and I don't have a woman in my life. No, they do as what a single mother would do which is take on the same roles that they say men only have and become that. Why? It is activated within us to be able to understand that we're all of that. We're, that's what makes us under, uh, come to wholeness is knowing that the whole is of the divine feminine and the divine masculine as one, the father, the mother, the son. That is the trinity. That is what is in us and that we have to look within ourselves and be ye activated into that so that we can carry out our, uh, our divine mission here on earth, even if it is just to be the parent 
but it also comes in play when you are talking to your friends and your family and you're uplifting them. Men don't realize that, you know, you're still being uh, a nurturer when you're, you know, it don't have to be your children. If you're talking, if you're a teacher, you know, if you're an educator, if if you have a friend who was down and you like lifted him up, that comes from the, the divine feminine aspect of you. When a woman is making sure that she protect her home, that's coming from the divine masculine within her. So the miseducation here in this aspect is the pronouns and agendas that create duality, that keep you looping outside of yourself, keep you divided from within your own self. And that's why there's a lot of division in the, uh, in the world because we feel like there's the male, the female, and she has a role and he has a role and that is that. No, no, those are the same things from what, in all of us as us. I don't wanna, if you have any questions, I need more clarity, please feel free to respond <laughs> in the uh, comments. But yes, so understand that if you're reading the Bible or if you have shunned your, or shunned the Bible or if you have turned away from the Bible because you feel like the Bible is more of a man, don't think about who created it ask in your own prayer what is in this bible that can help me now okay and if you're not into the bible then in your meditation ask where's the knowledge and the wisdom that can help me now on my spiritual journey so what i have done was provided an affirmation okay there is but one god or spirit, and I am all that God is. Start there and say, then let the question be in your meditation, what does that mean? How am I all that God is? And you'll come to know. Now I'll share this uh, in part two, because I'm going to go right into the two and into the three, because I want to get this out and um, upload it onto my social media platforms. Now, I also have provided a list of additional reading material for the soul. These are some readings that also help me along with the Bible. And it wasn't so much of me cross-referencing back and forth where the Bible says this and this says that. No, that's not what I did. Like I said, through prayer and meditation, my question was, what can help me on my spiritual journey now? And these are some of the books that started coming. The first book was The Seven Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra, or Chopra, excuse me. And then The Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ. And then The Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. The Science of Mind is very deep. It helps you understand that the universe is mental. Like at the very, very beginning when I said, when, when my father said that, you know, all that is, is, uh, ultimate reality consciousness, that is what the science of mind is really talking about. It helps you understand that everything is consciousness. Everything is energy, you know, and everything has a vibration, you know, within this, um, within the consciousness. So you can have higher consciousness, you can have lower consciousness, you can vibe low, you can vibe high, right? The higher uh, vibrations of of consciousness is more of the God frequency, as we would call it. And the low frequency of the soul is when you're, what they call the devil, is when you're thinking lowly and loathing thyself or loathing other people. When you have such a, a dark soul and a dark heart where all you see is negativity and doom. Okay. So I hope that this part one was beneficial to you. And if you have any questions, comments or any questions or need any clarity, please do leave a comment or leave it below and I shall get back to you. So now I'll stop sharing my screen. And before I stop recording, I want to send to you all peace, love, and blessings on your spiritual journey toward wholeness, toward knowing that you are all that is. We're all aspects or we're all this image and this likeness of the divine substance that 
we breathe. The breath that we breathe, that is God's presence. And the body is the temple and the breath keeps it alive. And that is you. All right. So again, I thank you for joining me and I hope that you will continue on with part two as I move into that next. And um, if not, I thank you for following me and listening to me this far. Many blessings to you all and namaste. Yes. All right. So I will see you in the next video.